No fates, bad. <laughs> My favorite! Oh god. Okay. Meat is good. Okay. Meat is murder. Which you'd know, considering that you've what you've been up to. Who are you to get judgy now? I'm just I'm just sharing. Facts. And you need to murder something to eat its meat, so that's that's like technically true. What? <laughs> Feels like a DVD rip. I want to fix this stuff with more errors. <laughs> okay, Koopa, that was big. Yeah? Yeah? Oh. Technically true is the best kind of true. Um. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Oh. Oh, she angry. She's so angry. Hey, Zetas, if you thinking what I'm thinking? No, probably not. It's gonna be a person on that spit, right? Or several parts of overlapping people, prep? Mmm, you son of a bitch. I'm seeing many pigs wearing palm tree button-down prints, you know? Oh, god damn it. She's hangry, probably. When you look closely at the spit, you spot what definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. Oh. The other, other white meat. Got ya. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. You're cooking up your own partners over here. Mm. <sighs> hey, now I don't feel so bad being mean to them earlier. Considering they're being little shits right now. Might be eating like, like, I don't know. Who else would wear a Hawaiian print shirt? David King. He would wear one. And we do literally everything on this island. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal. Uh-oh. Wow, well, he's ready for a change, because I am with my broad axe. It's the perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. Oh. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical, historical eras. Yes. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's it's clean when the meat is cooked. No blood. Okay. Ah, you two and your ridiculous bicep swinging contest. Enough. Grow up. Oh, God. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Obvs. Oh, uh, no. The hell it is? Oh, God. Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you'd like. Oh. That face. Please stop. Please. I hate when we fight. Or talk. Or even when we look at each other in the eye. Oh. I can do it. I have the scroll of Azeroth. Please don't. <laughs> You're gonna turn it into a mush. <laughs> Great. Instead of slicing it up, you can club it to a second death. Hey, Zetas, I know this isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer to carve up Felix. I mean, Diller. Oh, God, we're eating Felix! Woo! <laughs> well, now I know what happened to the other survivors. Ugh, I can't believe we're eating Felix. What? Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapons for 72 hours straight. Oh, dear God. And it doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done, they will take even longer cleaning their weapon, all while explaining the value and maintaining your tool. Despite being 
a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason, they're always terrified of tetanus. <sighs> okay. Hey, why don't you let me... Why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea! We'd hate for it to get cold. He hated... He hated it when it got cold! Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Oh god. Ready to play? Would you like me to repeat that? Oh, I'm ready. Ready! Away we go! Slice. Oh. oh. <laughs> I did. Air. Woo! They get faster, and it's annoying. And I suck at this part. The fact that I completely fucked up the other one. Ugh. And I completely missed. I know I missed completely fuck off. <clears throat> that was pretty good. I like to see what you could do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. Oh. Dinner is finally served. I'm sure. Shawarma is so good. Wait, shawarma? Wait, is shawarma actually a place? That dinner is finally served. Ugh. For real. The sounds, especially coming from the mass killers while they eat, which involves lifting their mats and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Mm. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to really be embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean... Come on, we're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the only ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they tried to smash... <laughs> they tried to mash stuff through there. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Spirit, why aren't you hungry? Two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, Zetas. Number two is no number two. One last thing to think about in the afterlife. Oh. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dismembered body parts floating in a spectral form. Do you see how deep this cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Oh. There. Between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is they're staring at you. You're not eating. They don't like that. Oh. I think they want an explanation why. What do you want to tell them? <laughs> this is gross. <laughs> Everything about this dinner is an abomination from what is almost certainly human meat to the lack of manners to the talk of dismembered parts and those noises. Everything is so vile I might throw up. Interesting. Even Spirit is talking about number twos! I thought she was the classy one. <laughs> the face! <laughs> oh, well, then. I didn't realize our eating habits grossed you out. <clears throat> Don't be such jo <laughs> judgmental. Sheesh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, if I could feel shame or sadness, I might be experiencing both right now. <clears throat> But what I can feel is rage, and I'm furious you just ruined the meal. I have a whole leg to eat. Oh, uh, uh. Even though you're in the hot seat now, you're not nearly as panicked as you probably should be. Uh, wait, yeah? That's almost certainly a lack of calories catching up to you, and you feel your whole body begin to shut itself down. Oh, hey, it's me again. Fuck you, ocean. Alright. Hmm. Your friend, mentor, and guide, narrator to the narrator, the ocean. 
Not sure how I feel about that characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're really here. Okay. No one can tell you. Not unless you follow the right path. Or at least a right path. No. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Uh, that's not ominous or anything. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Starting scenes over and having to fast forward back to where you were, am I right? Fuck you! <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I just got fucking triggered, okay? Because <laughs> it was their fault. They kept. They made me pick mint chip and I wanted to pick chocolate. If they're adamant, I pick mint chip some bullshit. I, though I do like mint chip, I'm not gonna lie. Mint chip is good ice cream. But still! Some bullshit. Mm. For this place holds many secrets, even from itself, but the one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Uh oh Why are you here? Um... Okay. Why are you here? I don't know. Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Okay. Vague, mysterious, I gotta get up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling. I wanna just like smack the hell out of this narrator. Hold on, I'm back. Oh god. One more piece of advice. You've made many choices by now. Some of them I liked, some of them I did not. Uh -oh. It's in your best interest to make more choices that I like. Uh -oh. For the choices might be yours to make, but they're mine to reward. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> uh, you wake up to find Trapper holding your limp body, gingerly pouring cool water into your mouth. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You had me worried there, passing out like that. Thought maybe you died. That would have been terrible. Nobody dies on this island without me killing them. You hear that? Nobody. Okay, good sir. Thanks, I guess. Don't mention it. I mean that. Don't mention it. Someone might think I care for you. That can't happen. I've got a reputation to uphold. God. This just gets cheesier and cheesier, doesn't it? I'm starting to understand, I think. When you dipped down, it looked like you hit your head on the edge of the table. If it were me, the table would have been the one to crack open. I'm sure it really hurt you, though. So I figured a little ocean air might help wake you up and I brought you down by the water. That's really thoughtful of you. What? A magnificently muscular, wealthy, artistically gifted Adonis can't also be thoughtful? Oh, this is too much. I... Don't answer because it's obvious. Adonis was a pussy. <laughs> Killed by a boar? Get out of here with that garbage. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Oh. Best part right there. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I do find myself in an unusual position, though. Uh oh. Despite the overwhelming probability that I'll eventually find myself standing over your lifeless corpse, I don't want you dead just yet. I'm here to talk to you, like a regular human person. Okay. And right now, I'm worried that I might be coming off a bit too forceful. I know my mere presence can be intimidating, oh. but I don't want you to get the wrong impression about me or how I feel about you. You're cute. 
<laughs> oh god. So I'll just put it out there. I might possibly like you. Yes! I can't say that about everyone. Or really anyone else on this island. Hey, hey. Like is good. Like is a start. There's something different about you. You aren't like the others. Henceforth, I think it's time I shared something with you that I haven't shared with anyone in a long time. Uh-oh. It's a big part of who I am, and I think you're ready for it. Um, you watch a trapper reaches into a singlet and pulls out some sort of rolled-up scroll of paper. He grips it firmly in his hand. Uh... Um, <laughs> it's one of my sketches. I don't know if you know this, but I love to draw. The arts have always been a passion of mine. Aww. Maybe this is another reason why I love trappers. Would you like to see it? Oh god. That's a little too fast. Hmm. No. There we go. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm ready. Sounds like a big step for you to share something that important with me. I want you to trust me when you let yourself be that vulnerable. Yeah. Trapper stares at you, but despite the silence lasting way too long, you can't figure out what he's thinking. Only that it seems to be getting closer to you the longer he stares. Uh oh. What an interesting response. Uh oh. <laughs> We should walk down the beach a bit, perhaps put some extra space between us and the other uncouth monsters. Um... Trapper turns and begins to walk away from you. Oh, please don't kill me. Follow quietly. You don't respond, you simply follow him, silently, observing the sheer force with which he takes each step along the water's edge. I'm gonna die. Okay. There is one thing about myself I'd like to share with you now, okay? A long time ago when I was a boy who did not yet know the potential of his own strength, fought a bear with my bare hands. Ah. Uh, that behemoth must have stood nine, nay, ten feet tall, and had to weigh a thousand pounds at least. But after hours rolling in the mud with the beast, I finally snapped its neck. Then I carried the carcass on my back for five miles to the woods and hills to my home. Before I washed its blood from my own wounds, I skinned it. For the next two days, I ate each and every part of that bear. For during our ten-mile walk on that mountainside, I realized that formidable beast gave me a great gift, and I owed it the courtesy of making his body part of mine. Waste not, want not. That bear helped me realize I had nothing in this world to fear. No man, animal, or monster would ever take me down. And I'm reminded that each time I stand by my fireplace where that bear's skin will stay for as long as I take, take breath. Okay. Is that- isn't that incredible? Magnificent. No more incredible than you are. I expect nothing less from you. Trapper looks at you, a piercing look even through his mask. He smirks, but it's not clear why. Then he turns and lays down. Oh, God. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you, and you quickly spin around, ready to fend off whatever new danger has popped up on this strange island. Only to find this wine cladette spreading across the beach, clipboards in hand, which they're waving in the air above their heads. Uh. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary. Oh. And attend each event as scheduled. These two are driving me nuts. Playing sick for cute flirt points was not a part of this evening's act. Hey! Hey, 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 hey! You two! <laughs> Stop it! <clears throat> That's strictly slotted in for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Ooh. Okay, they're very angry at me. <laughs> Playing sick? No, I was! No time for excuses. Uh -huh. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. I'm done with these two. Go, 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 go! No, 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 no! Alright, once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. Uh-oh. 
We're not going to blame anyone in particular. But someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry, you hasn't been sticking to the schedule. Uh, I think they mean me. That means that we're behind on time for evening activities. Oh, God. And we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. <laughs> I mean... You know... You know... Not my fault. They, they really can't put the blame entirely on me, right? Right. I hope not. <laughs> and then they're gonna blame it entirely on me. Just one story, but story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative heavy experience. You're telling us the only one person gets to share? How will we decide who? Oh great, we have to decide as a group? That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. A voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. Sorry everyone, I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time? While I was passed out? Been there before, even though it's taking some pressure off of me. This is an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? I mean... <clears throat> Seriously, has anything ever here ever happened on schedule even once? Probably not. <clears throat> Damn it, Donald. If you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick. Then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Bus and Mus are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. Oh, okay. Trapper Angie. <clears throat> we all know you love to kill. It's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. I renounced my name. Who's Donald? Who's White? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. <laughs> okay, they're scared. But we still gotta get started on story time, so... Nobody. Zetas, who you think should go? Ah, uh, damn it, that's a name. See? Please, pick somebody quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. <laughs> oh, come on. It's story time without a little bloodshed, you know? I'm gonna go Trapper. I choose you, Trapper! Oh lord. <laughs> whoa, whoa. This entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the cash phrases, will ya? Yes, of course you want to hear my story. It's a good one. And an old one, too. This is an infamous tale about two young friends from my hometown. Oh. Best buds who did everything and anything together. Fish, hunt, fight, skip rocks, climb the tallest trees, climb the highest peak. The more dangerous something was, the more they wanted to do it. But everything changed one day when the slightly older friend asked, for, asked the other for a favor. My father doesn't want me going out with you anymore. He said we're dangerous together. We take risks we shouldn't. And if I keep hanging out with you, he says one day I'm going to get hurt. Do you think you could come by and tell my dad we'll be, we'll be careful so we can still be friends? Uh -oh. Of course, said the other friend, who was always eager to please his best mate. So the two went to see the concerned father, who puffed away at his pipe as he listens to every promise his son's pal made about being more cautious. 
But when the slightly younger and slightly smaller boy finished, his friend's father responded stone-faced, No, sorry. This is best for both of you. I don't want my son hanging out with you anymore. And that's that. The young boy was so crestfallen he left immediately. No one would see him cry. He would not give them the satisfaction. Especially because if they did, they might tell others in town and they'd all think him weak. Worse, his own father would never forgive his son for letting others see him that way. But he was too upset to go home right away or be spotted on the pass. And instead, he sat outside his friend's house in the little hiding spot they had often sat in during rainstorms. Or when they didn't want anyone to see them trading empty rocks they dug up. <clears throat> yeah, oh god. It was quiet as he stifled, stifled his own tears, and that's when he heard it. A sound and odor wafting alongside the pipe smoke carried on dark wind. Betrayal. Uh -oh. Thanks, Dad. I don't want to hang out with him anymore, but I didn't want to tell him that. He'd be a big baby about it. <clears throat> it's okay, I get it. Don't blame you at all either. He's soft and needy. You need strong friends. Someday you really would have ended up getting hurt because of him. You need friends you can rely on. <laughs> Trapper looks angry. Uh -oh. The muffled tears stopped in the hiding spot that had been a pit of sadness now overflowed with rage. The boy went home. If anyone passed him on the path, all they saw was determination. That night he spoke to no one. He ate no dinner. He slept no sleep. The next day, he got up early and sat near the tallest tree in the woods by his former friend's house. It was the one tree no kid in town had ever conquered. Its top remained untouched. <clears throat> he remained there till dark before he finally went home. He did this for eight days. On the ninth day, his old mate finally passed by. Hey, what are you doing here? Asked the Judas. Oh. Nothing. Out hunting squirrels and sat down to eat this apple, lied the younger boy. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I hope you're okay. I can't believe my dad did that. It's so unfair. Yes, it was truly unthinkable, answered the boy through a smile that carried no warmth. Yeah, well, okay. I'll see you around. Well, before the betrayer could leave, his old friend called out to him. I'm going to climb this tree, he said. I'm going to make it to the top. <clears throat> The hell you are, no one can do that, and they definitely can't do it by themselves. He had him. I can, and I will. I understand why you can't, though. Your dad said you're you're afraid you'll get hurt. I'm not afraid, he's afraid, replied the friend, now seething with shame and with his own rage. Oh, forget what my dumb old father said. I'll do it with you. You'll see I'm not afraid. Okay. This kid's gonna fall off the tree. <laughs> and so the two climbed and climbed, each making it higher than they ever had before. And they continued to climb. Uh oh. But whether they would have reached the top will never be known. Because the turncoat, the boy who made his father lie for him, fell before he could make it all the way up. Some say it was no accident that his old chum pushed him. But how could he? He was the weak one after all. Oh. Of course, such a weak child can never send his best friend to his death. This was an accident. Tragic for sure, but nothing more. Of course. A month later, though, no one could explain how the dead boy's father choked to death on his own pipe. Uh... Yeah, definitely good call on staying quiet after that. Silence really is best at a time like this. Shit. <laughs> what about you, Zetas? What did you think of my tale? Now that's a story. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh. Yes, he liked that response. Spawns, he's handing you a gold coin. Okay. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. Oh no, not. 
A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for all for all of seven seconds because Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Uh, uh, hey baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? <laughs> I do mind. He doesn't wait for an answer. That is an inflatable. Oh my god. <laughs> It's a cool toy bat. Okay. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. What? I'm the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in an ocean of sardines. Okay. No one can give you what I can. Oh. You just have to find me. I'd rather not. Come find me, baby. No, thank you. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. <laughs> uh, Trapper approaches you. Oh, oh, here we go again. Finally, those dudes are gone. Now that I know we're totally alone, we can really talk. Uh, uh. Okay. But let's get away from this ash and smoke and take a dip in the pool. Okay. Whether it's water, sweat, or my enemy's blood, I prefer my muscles glistening and not dried. Okay. A dip in the pool with a trapper. You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow him. An offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. Oh. 